Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video and you might not realize it from this box, but as you can see in the title, today we are going to be unboxing my new computer. In here is a 16 inch MacBook Pro with some custom picked specs. So today we're going to unbox it, do a little overview and tell you guys what I got and why I got it. So obviously since you can't go into an Apple store and pick up a MacBook right now, they ship it to you. And even if the Apple stores were open, you still can't get this one in the store. This is a custom spec order. So you go on Apple site and you pick what you want and then they ship it to you or you can pick it up in the Apple store after two weeks. So I'm so excited. Let's just get into this. is way heavier than I thought. Before I actually open this laptop, I do want to say one thing. I'm going into college for computer science and engineering, but if you want to do code or video editing or Photoshop, you do not need a computer of this caliber. As I said, I'm a student, so I got a discount on this computer and I've been saving up for a while specifically for a laptop for college. So I understand this is a very expensive device, but I'm going to be keeping it way longer than just the four years of my undergrad. I think that's why I like Max 2 to the side of me. I have my 13 inch MacBook Pro. It's the base model 13 inch MacBook Pro. and I've had it for five years. So if this is specced up a little bit, I hope to keep it even longer than five years. And I give it a little bit higher specs for another reason. As you know, Apple is switching to ARM and this is going to be one of the last great Intel MacBook Pros, which means it's still able to boot Windows. It's able to run all the applications that you'd like. So I'll give Apple some time to perfect the ARM chips. But in the meanwhile, I will have a lovely time using this laptop. All right, here we go. Uh, oh man, God. there it is. All right, so right away, obviously this is bigger and heavier than my 13 inch, but that makes sense since it packs a lot more power. As for what else is in the box, not that much. Apple says you get an accessory kit, but really it's just the charger. So USB-C to USB-C cable, your normal design by Apple in California, Apple stickers and regulatory information, and then the charging adapter. So this is the 96 watt charger because this laptop sucks a lot of juice for the components it has inside, but you can still charge this on a plane because it's under 100 watts. Something like a razor blade, it would trip the airplane circuit and you wouldn't be able to charge it on a airplane. Oh, you get space gray apple stickers. Wow, that's fancy. All right, as I struggle to get all the paperwork back, yeah, forget it. As I said, since I'm used to the 13 inch, it's a lot bigger, but I don't mind it. I've been waiting a long time since the last generation MacBook Pro had the terrible keyboard. This one has the new Magic English Keyboard. Whoa, whoa, language. whoa. And this trackpad is huge. All right, so I'm going to set this up real quick, and then we'll take a look at the specs that I got. This keyboard compared to my 13 inch, which uses the old, old scissor switch. This one is a little more shallow, but it feels great compared to the butterfly switch. I'm trying to launch system information, but it's not launching. I tried it twice now. What are you doing, Mac? What are you doing? Anyway, I mean, you can see a majority of the, the, the specs here. So processor 2.3 gigahertz, eight core i9. The reason I got the i9 is not because I wanted an i9, but it's a better value. If I go to the storage tab, you can see this also has a terabyte of SSD storage. And I also upgraded the GPU and the RAM. And so the base model MacBook Pro that has a six core i7, if you give that model, all the upgrades, the RAM, the SSD, the graphics. The price difference between that laptop and the higher tier model, which already is an i9, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and a bit 
better graphics. The price difference between that is, is very minimal. So I said, why not get the two extra cores? It helps in video encoding. It helps when you run virtual machines. So that's why I went for the i9. 32 gigabytes of RAM. I use the Adobe suite, which is a very RAM intensive. I also will be running Linux and Windows virtual machines on here. So more RAM is always nice. You can't upgrade anything about this laptop later. So I said, go for the 32. Graphics, it says the Intel UHD 630, but I got the Radeon 5500M 8 gig. I got the 8 gig because Puget Systems recommends six gigabytes plus for 4K video editing. So that'll keep me covered. And the upgrade's only like 90 or 100 bucks. So when compared to every other Apple upgrade, that one is cheap. I still don't know why system information is not running. Oh, there we go. There we go. So if we go to graphics, Oh, okay, here it is. The AMD Radeon Pro 5500M 8GB VRAM. So yeah, that's really just going to help with video editing mainly. Upgrade to the terabyte because I'm going to be dual booting Windows on here. And then as I said, I'm going to have those Linux and Windows virtual machines. So that's going to take up a lot of space really quickly, along with programs like the Adobe Suite and all that sort of stuff. So if we get back to the features that all the 16 inch MacBooks have, they all have the touch bar. And this is the new Magic Keyboard, as I said, so the new generation of MacBook Pro. The escape key is now physical because apparently the touch bar would freeze sometimes and you couldn't hit the escape key because it was virtual. But now it is physical, so that's not a problem. We have Touch ID in the upper right hand corner which I just set up so if I lock my computer and then I place my finger on touch ID it locks me in boom now people have been saying why isn't there face ID on a Mac I don't know this is a good upgrade for me so I'm not I'm I like touch ID so they'll they'll probably put it in sometime I don't know they need to fit all of the sensors in the top bezel here which shouldn't be too hard because the Dell XPS which is a com Windows competitor to this laptop has Windows Hello support and even thinner bezels, which is really impressive. And I guess if I bring up the Dell XPS 15, I should say why I went for this laptop and not a Dell. All it comes down to these days is what is your preference? What do you like using? And I like using Mac. I like coding on a Mac. And so since I'm going into computer science, I wanted to get a laptop that I enjoy using. You can absolutely get through computer science. You can absolutely get through video editing on any laptop, as I said before but this is what I wanted to get and I had the ability to get it, which I'm very fortunate for. The Dell XPS 15 is actually really, really impressive. They just redesigned it this year. It's got all USB-C like the MacBook. It's got a really striking design. It's got very thin bezels, but the place where it fell flat for me is the highest you could go on the VRAM is four gigabytes. As I mentioned earlier, for video editing, they recommend six gigabytes plus for 4K footage from this camera. So, kind of steered me towards the MacBook. As for the touch bar, I'll probably install an application that lets me put shortcuts up there for apps or certain actions to make it a little more useful than, than what it is right now. But other than that, I don't have much to say on this unboxing and overview. This is gonna be a great laptop all around. With that 5500M, it can even do some gaming, which I'm very excited for. I'm a light gamer now, but I'm, I might play some City Skylines or CSGO, which this, this can handle, absolutely. But you have to put Windows on it, and then you also have to kind of tinker with some of the settings. So you have to unvolt the CPU, maybe turn off turbo boost so it doesn't thermal throttle so hard. But this laptop can absolutely do it and look out soon on the channel for a gaming test of this laptop. Oh, this is actually after the fact, but I forgot to mention, if you want this laptop or the Dell XPS because it also uses only Thunderbolt 3, then be prepared for this. That's right, dongles. And looking at these, you might be like, oh wow, he was sponsored by this, this uni company. Nope, I had to buy all of these with my own money. These just happen to have good reviews and uh, were pretty inexpensive. So let's, I guess, go through a quick dongle unboxing. That's exciting, right? All right, so first let's hit the Amazon Basics. This is just a really simple USB-C to USB adapter. This is for when I'm on the go. Not at my desk. This one cost eight bucks. The Apple one was 20 bucks. So this was kind of a, a no brainer. Amazon basics, USB to USB C cable. This is actually not for charging a phone. I can show you what it's for. It's for this Sabrent hard drive enclosure that I reviewed a little bit ago. So instead of using their USB to USB cable, I'm going to use this USB to USB C cable. So that would be cool. This is a USB-C to USB hub for when I'm at my desk. So my hard drives will plug into this, my mouse and all that good stuff. It's very simple. There's not much to say here. These are all pretty affordable, by the way. So I'll leave my affiliate link down in the description below. Next adapter is this USB-C to display port cable for connecting it to my 
monitor. Next adapter is a USB-C to Ethernet adapter, so I can connect it to the network at university since Wi-Fi can be pretty spotty in the dorms. Also, all these uni adapters come with little dongle bags, so that's pretty cool. This is a USB-C to HDMI adapter. This is for if I'm on the go, if I need to hook up my laptop to a projector or something like that, or a TV. Um, I got this. And finally, but not least, we have a USB-C to SD card reader adapter. You actually don't need one of these if you have a Dell XPS because that laptop has an SD card slot in it. And it actually wasn't a huge deal breaker for me because how often am I putting SD cards into my laptop? Probably once a week. So this is okay. This is for not only taking footage off my Sony a6300, but also for flashing Raspberry Pi cards, uh, stuff like that. And then Finally, I got this little sleeve, and so it comes with a laptop sleeve, and then a bag. So this is for use with the, the charger and the cable, but um, it's probably gonna be my dongle bag to put my other dongle bags in. And if we look at the laptop sleeve itself, it's just a kind of basic magnetic laptop sleeve. It's got this nice soft, like felt-like interior. So if I get the laptop really quick, I put it in there. slides right in. Well, I guess the magnet isn't that strong. Very weak magnet, so it's not gonna keep your laptop in if you shake it like that. So I'm holding onto the laptop, don't do that. Now that's all of it, that's all of it. Can't forget the dongles, these are, I mean, you need these. So yeah, that's, that's it. I'm gonna go set this thing up and I'll see you guys in the next video.